True Bypass. It's been hyped the past many years as a really cool thing. In my book, it's probably the worst you can do because you will have total chaos on your pedal board. Let's, for the sake of the example, have five stomp boxes, five imaginary stomp boxes, each with a half a meter of cable between them. I know you don't have that long cables, but just for the example, you probably have more stomp boxes than five. Now that equals a total of two meters. Then you have six meter from the guitar to the first stomp box, and you have six meter from the last stomp box back to amp. So that's six plus two plus six, 14 meter of cable. That is what your guitar will have to drive when all your stomp boxes are off. Uh, the difference between a six meter cable and 14 meters is huge. Now, you activate stomp box number one. Now your guitar only sees six meter of cable. But that stomp box, which might have a fairly high output impedance, will have to drive two plus six meter of cable back to the amp. You can tell. And if it's a fairly high op output impedance on that uh, stomp box, you can't do it without sacrificing your tone. Now, you turn off the, the first stomp box and you activate the last one. Now your guitar sees six meter plus two meter. That's eight meter of cable. And that box, and we don't know the output impedance of that one, has to drive six meter of cable back. I hope you can see the pattern here that depending on what's on or off, everything is loaded differently. And we haven't even touched the problematic with the cross-loading between the stomp boxes. One stomp box may have a 100 ohm output impedance. The next one has 10K, which means that the following stomp boxes will be loaded differently depending on which, which ones are on or off before that one. The problem is you have total anarchy and chaos on a pedal board with only true bypass uh, stomp boxes. In this little clip, I will try to demonstrate um, what true bypass does to your main signal. So here's the main signal directly into the amp. And now I go through an extra six meter of cable. Quite noticeable. Back again. Quite scary how much high you lose. Now let's activate the buffer. So now we go through um, direct, and the other scenario is an additional six meter cable, but with the buff one connected. This is the direct signal again. Buff one. No difference. Back to direct. Buff one. Original. Buff one. It would really save your day to put a buff one on a pedal board with true bypass pedals. Because first and foremost, you will take care of your guitar. Uh, it'll have a constant load identical to that of an amplifier. And the second buffer will take care of the cable back to the amp. So now the two main issues are taken care of. The buff one will not take care of the cross loading you have on the pedal board. For that, you either need multiple buff ones uh, to uh, place between each stomp box or uh, the MR5 or the MR10 loop system, which has impedance correction on every single loop. So to make it very short, true bypass is in my world, it's a gimmick. It actually makes uh, life as a guitar player quite tricky because your stomp boxes will sound different depending on the combination. So 
Get above one.